One of my favorite ingredients to cook with is taro or what some people call a yam. And one of my all-time favorite ways to cook with this is to make it into yam rings. If you have eaten the dim sum item uko or yu jiao, this is basically the same dough and when it's deep fried, it fries up into a really shatteringly crisp honeycomb kind of lettuce which is really really attractive. So we start by skinning and cubing some taro and steaming it just until it's tender enough to be mashed. So the best kind of taro for this are the ones that are flurry or you can just ask the vendors if the taro is one that is fun. So the next step is to combine some wheat starch with some boiling water and the goal is to form a dough which will act as a binder if you don't have this dough, your taro will just disintegrate in the oil. Once a dough that is not sticky has been formed, you can add your taro to this wheat starch dough and just knead both doughs together until it's uh, homogenous. At this point, the dough shouldn't feel sticky at all and now it's time to add some soft butter. So the butter should be cubed and soft enough to yield to the pressure of your fingers when it's pressed. You want to add it to the dough and on a clean surface you want to knead it kind of like with the base of your palm. You want to knead it into the dough. I find that a dough scraper is really handy for this job. So I usually use it to lift the dough up from the chopping board and bring it all together before I push it out again. So now to season the dough, um, I normally use some salt, some white pepper, some five spice powder which goes really nicely with taro as well as some sugar and I just knead it all together again. Once again the dough shouldn't stick to your hands but if it does, you can actually put it in the fridge and let it chill so it's more firm before you shape it. So if you're making mini yam rings or if you're making ukok, there is no need to do this step, but if you are making a huge yam ring, then I recommend making a base for it when you fry, so that it's a lot safer for you and you are way more delicate when you handle the yam ring. So all you have to do is cut out the base of an aluminium tray and then just poke it with a few holes and then we are ready to shape your chilled yam ring. First of all, you want to pinch off a small knob of dough. Uh, we're going to use this to test the oil temperature later, so set that aside. Now you just want to shape your dough into a donut shape or like a ring shape. You can shape it traditionally, which is like a tall kind of basket. But I think a shorter and wider one would be better because you require less oil and you can also fit more veggies in. Either way, you want to set the yam ring on the sheet of metal and allow it to chill in the fridge while you prepare the filling. You can use any filling you like with the yam ring. Uh, I just personally prefer to have a completely vegetarian filling. So the vegetables that I like to use are capsicums. So just cut them into bite-sized chunks. So I also like some mushrooms. I just remove the stems and cut them in four. Um, I also use some onions. So I just cut it in half and then I cut the halves into 8 pieces and then just uh, kind of flake it open into petals. So I like using onions because I feel that it makes the dish especially fragrant and it also adds a lot of visual appeal. I like to start the stir frying process by first toasting some nuts and then I remove them and set them aside. So now I add my veggies to the pot and I stir fry them until they're starting to soften. 
I'm making this Gong Bao style, so I'm adding some dried chilies, some spring onions, as well as some ginger. For flavorings, I'm adding some Shaoxing, some oyster sauce, some ketchup manis for sweetness, some light sauce for saltiness, and then some cornstarch slurry just to thicken everything up. And then lastly, you want to toss in the cashews that you toasted earlier. You want the filling to be on the saucy side because the yam ring is more like crispy and starchy and um, more dense. So you want something that is saucy so that you can kind of mop it up and eat it with the yam ring. For the deep frying, all temperature is so important. So I'm going to show you um, how to tell if the temperature of the oil is just right. So you want to pick up a small knob of dough that you have saved earlier and drop it into the oil. If it browns instantly and floats up instantly, your oil is too hot. So you would know this because when you um, actually look at that piece of dough that has been fried, there are no loose strands, there, are, there is no honeycomb texture. If the temperature of the oil is just right, when you drop the piece of dough, the dough would actually take some time before it rises to the surface. It would also take a longer time to brown. But when it is finally crispy and you take it out, it should have like a really loose, almost falling apart kind of structure. This is what you want. So now that your oil's ready, carefully lower the yam ring down into the oil. You want to make sure that there is enough oil to fully submerge your yam ring. When your yam ring is in the oil frying, it's actually really delicate. So don't use your tongs to directly touch your yam, yam ring. It is far better to move it around using that piece of um, metal that the yam ring is sitting on. As an example, I want to show you um, a failure of mine. Um, so this is when I didn't use enough oil and tried to flip the yam ring in the oil. So what happened um, was that it completely lost all its honeycomb structure and I highly don't recommend this. So once it's done, once it looks brown and crispy, you can actually carefully remove it and just allow it to drain and cool. Thank mm -hmm. you.